is Omni Talk Retail. I'm Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazinga. And we are coming to you live once again from FMI, from the Simbi booth, where Simbi and Omni Talk are retail's single source of truth. And standing between us, Ann, is Benjamin Bond. Ben is the VP of Strategy and Business Development at Simbi. Ben, welcome to Omni Talk, and thanks for joining us at FMI. Thank you for having me, Chris. Um, it's taking everything in Chris's power right now not to call you Bond or 007. I look at his face. Look at have you seen anyone, any human being, so happy in Podcast their entire ain't over lives? yet, Ed. Podcast oh ain't my over God. yet. Uh, well, Ben, let's start by getting a little bit of your background and your role at Simbi. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I lead strategy for Simbi, which okay. is really focused on where is Simbi going as a company okay. and how are we going to get there. But then also, and, and more importantly, working really closely with our clients right. to make sure that they're getting the maximum value out of our technology. And uh, and quickly, like I think we've heard that a lot today about how people are thinking about, um, you know, it's kind of been reversed where now it's thinking about, you know, the technology and how you're going to bring people into that, like focus on the technology to help solve the problem and then how you bring the people into that. Is that something that you work with partners on too um, in your day-to-day -day conversations? A absolutely. We we pride ourselves on being uh, the industry leader in cutting edge technology and retail, particularly in store. Right. Uh, but we are also very mindful of the balance between product and process yes. and really thinking about how people are working in collaboration with our technology. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes there's very specific business nuances with our clients where we have to also meet them where they are. Right. And so we're thinking about how can we help them evolve in their processes, but also do so in a very manageable way okay. where they're going to be able to get the maximum maximum value as quickly as possible. And oh, go oh, ahead. No, go ahead yeah. I was going to say, what's your background? How did you get into this? How did you get into this whole Simbi lifestyle? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I, I spent my entire career in retail. Okay. I've always been very passionate about the space. I okay. started in fashion uh, and have worked at this point across basically every retail sector. I spent the majority of that time working for global consultancies like Accenture and Carney. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I was really focused on how do retailers create growth right. and giving them guidance on growth strategy, which would often go into the co conversation of, well, how do you then achieve that growth? Mm -hmm. What is the type of company that can get there? Right. And you're thinking about growth enablement, growth-led transformations, and oftentimes digitally enabled business models and thinking at really how are individuals within the company going to be able to leverage that technology to create that growth? Right. So Ben, I'm curious, because I imagine you sit across the table from a lot of retail executives in your role. How, are, how would you sum up what you're hearing from them in terms of how they're thinking about both AI and particularly automation in store, uh, both in the short term and in the long term? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody's so focused on AI these days. And, you know, the, the conversation around AI, I think, often drifts towards Gen AI. Yeah, right. Which, which is a very is, I'm important... I'm glad you're making that designation, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a very important part of it. And, and, what, and when, when that's the conversation, it's all about quick wins. Mm -hmm. And I think there's this, uh, as, as they should be, really thinking about experimentation and learning. Mm -hmm. But there's also a little bit of fear of not getting left behind. Mm -hmm. Now, when the conversation shifts into automation... I don't know if all executives necessarily appreciate the linkage between the two mm. and how much potential is being unlocked in automation because of all the progress in Gen AI. Mm. And so when we shift it to the in-store context, we are working at the forefront of automation in-store. Okay. And in particular, we're looking at all of those tasks which are incredibly monotonous when we're almost asking the store team to perform machine-like tasks. Right. And so we're taking that burden off of those team members. And there's so much opportunity for those stores to not only execute better, but mm -hmm. also be more accurate. And that's the space that we're supporting them with. And Ben, what are some of those best practices? Because I think it's easy to say those things, yeah. but what, what do retailers really need to be doing when they start a pilot or when they even further back, like in the strategy phase of like, how are we going to measure this successfully? Yes. Yes. Well, so what's been interesting over the last year, particularly in the, in the store intelligence arena, particularly leveraging okay. computer vision, mm -hmm. there's okay. been this shift from, is there value here to there is value. Now I need to figure out how am I going to get that value and when am I going to pursue it? Okay. And so what, something that's really important in those early days is to engage with partners that you trust mm -hmm. and to go through the exercise of thinking about based on my unique business construct, where is that value going to be and how big is it? And okay. that's going to flow directly into 
really a prioritization element. And so a, a really common mistake is, you know, that the potential is so massive right. and this data can be used in so many different right. ways Boiling that you, you, you get really big eyes. And actually for the pilot to be a success, you need to really hone in on those two or three most important things, okay. nail those really well, and then you're gonna build confidence and momentum to move forward. Got it. And, and what, what is the value? So if you were to, if I was to hold a, a gun to your head, so to speak, um, <laughs> Not that I would, Ben, but... Um, <laughs> but are you continuing on this Bond theme? But maybe, maybe, maybe if you're the Bond, maybe you would to me. But um, depends on how, what the next question I'm going to ask you. But, um, but no, if I held your feet to the fire, what is the value? And if you were to outline, you know, maybe one or two or three things that the retailer should, you know, if they're thinking about automation in store for the first time, you know, this is what you should go after. You know, yeah. this is probably where I'd start kind yeah. of question. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned the piece on execution and accuracy. Mm -hmm. We and I'll explain both, but mm -hmm. we always start with execution. There's okay. so many instances, particularly execution at the shelf. How you're doing your job, basically, and 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 particularly how are we executing at the shelf? Yeah. We want to make sure we have the right product in the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. and that's something that is really basic that retailers are doing every day, all day. But it's not always efficient, and there's often a time gap and a very slight execution gap. So we help to close that gap in a really easy and effective Got way. It. Got it. So that's really important. I'd never thought about that, actually. So that's really important. So you're basically saying, like, let's just first come in and just understand how you're doing what you're doing. Like, how well are you getting products to shelf, right? Yep. How often are they on shelf? Yep. And that doesn't impact the work you're doing as an employee in the store, anything. You're just putting the robot in. It's scanning the store, and you're getting a report card of performance. That's yeah. essentially what you're saying. We, which is we, a good way to think about it, yeah. We, we get that baseline, and then oftentimes the next step is actually taking activities that the, that the store team is already doing, mm -hmm. and we're just giving them better, better understanding as to when and how they should be doing those activities, and sometimes maybe changing the timing or exactly like the, the, the optimal routing of right. those activities. Right. Uh, well, Ben, we've talked to some of your clients. We've talked to industry experts the last couple of days um, to really understand exactly what you're talking about, the case for deploying robotics in store and the benefits that come from it. But I'm curious, like, where is it going next? What are the next things that once somebody, you know, has built the road already with, with in-store robotics, that how do they get more cars on that road and yeah. how do they get more throughput, more scale once they've deployed something like this? Yeah. So it's, it's really present in, in our value case. About half the value is gonna come from benefits in store. Okay. What is a little bit uh, you know next in the sequencing yeah. is everything else that can be unlocked upstream okay. outside of the store. Hmm. Okay. And so then you're thinking about how is this data gonna feed into various optimization engines and decisioning that we have across the business relating to merchandising, planograms, forecasting, allocation. Right. All of these are Retail things media. that are gonna, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. That's all going to benefit, and that's sort of what comes next. Okay. Um, and then Tally Spot was recently introduced, adding a computer vision element into that. Um, we heard from one retailer, they're starting to use this in the back of house. Have you ex have heard of any other use cases or any other scenarios that you're like, oh, we didn't, we didn't, that wasn't like on our initial roadmap, but this is working for them and they like it for this reason? This data is so transformational that that almost happens to us daily. Okay. In the case of Spot, what we're really excited about is it's it's kind of intuitive. Yeah, explain that what TallySpot is yeah. too, be Absolutely. relative to the robot as well, if you don't mind. So, so, so TallySpot is a fixed camera solution. So it's, it's basically a different type of sensor in the store. Uh, and it's, it's, it's different from Tally, our, our core robotics platform. And so what's really intuitive for most retailers is that when they think about where is this technology going long-term, mm -hmm. it's ubiquitous. You kind of have whatever you want. It's all over the store you're gonna have a robot, that's the most important piece for sort of the foundation and, sure. and frequent high quality data. But then you're gonna layer on other sorts of capture modalities around the store. For example, a fixed camera, or maybe a mobile handheld, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So this is right. where we know the industry is going and we're choosing to lead in that journey. And that's why we're excited to say we're the only platform that is out there with yeah. multiple modalities. Right. They all got to work together. They do. They yeah. do. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us today. That was great. Great conversation. I mean, you know, we're on record as saying 2025, the year of the robot. And I'm, I'm still here. I think the robot is going to leave the industry not just stirred up, man, but shaken, too. Oh, my God. All right. Oh we'll be here. All, we'll God. be here. We got one more interview coming your way. From, one more left. One more interview guys. coming your way from FMI. And we'll thank you to Simbi for sponsoring our coverage here at the show. And until that interview, Anne. Oh, be careful out there. <laughs>